اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد في الاولين وصل على سيدنا محمد في الاخرين وصل على سيدنا محمد في الملأ الاعلى يوم الدين ما شاء الله لا قوه الا بالله العلي العظيم مدد يا اولياء الله عيننا بعون الله وكونوا عونا لنا بالله عسى على فضل الله مدد السلام للسيد الشيخ عبد الله الفائز الثاني السلام للسيد الشيخ محمد ناظم عبد الحقاني مدد السيد الشيخ محمد عادل الرباني رجال الله عيننا بعون الله وكونوا عونا لنا بالله عسى على فضل الله This poem is attributed to Sayyidina Uwais al-Qarani who lived at the time of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but uh, he never met him physically sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi and uh, not because he didn't want to meet him and he wasn't a ashiq an enamored lover of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even without meeting him but their spirituality because he knew his his uh, spiritual presence of prophet so he wanted nothing but more to go to go and visit him but because he his mother was alone and she uh, asked him to be with her to help her and that's why sayyidna uwais al-qarani forsaked his own sacrificed his own uh, what he loves to help his mother. And in this qasida, he said, Ya Sayyid al Khalqi Hali Anta Ta'lamu. He's addressing Prophet, not addressing anybody, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this this here, if, if our brothers hear this, they would definitely be have a problem with it. He's addressing Prophet, he says, Ya Sayyid al Khalq, O Master of Creation, Hali, my condition you know. Allahu Akbar. Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, knows the condition of Sayyidina Uwais al-Qarani and Sayyidina Uwais al-Qarani who never met him physically spiritually understood that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, knew his condition because he is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala khalifatullahi fi khalqi he is Allah's khalifa in his creation there's no shirk he's Allah's, he's Allah's servant whom Allah gave him knowledge of before and after we sit here and we talk about the end of times and what will happen in the end of times these are ulum that prophet ﷺ revealed only a drop from it to his sahaba about what will be describing in detail the signs of akhiruz zaman this is allah gave him this ilm allah gave him this knowledge so sayyidina awais al-qarani understood understood who who his door is understood who his who his direction is who his spiritual qibla is prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he went directly ya sayyid al khalq o master of creation i'm coming to you you know my condition wa man siwaka li hadha al abd yarhamu and who else besides you will have mercy on a servant like me بِحَقِّ جَاهِكَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ Now, they'll say, Sayyidina, they say, they, these people will say, if, if Sayyidina Uwais al-Qarani is saying this, then he's mushrik. Look at the third line. بِحَقِّ جَاهِكَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ So Sayyidina Uwais al-Qarani understood the Prophet is Abdullah. Because he's saying, by your status with your Lord, with Allah, I'm seeking, I'm seeking this through your high station with your Lord. I'm not thinking you are Lord. I'm not thinking you're, you're God. No, I'm coming to you because you are a servant, but a, an elevated servant. A servant with high station. A servant with high minan and ata, with so much grants from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah gave him and favors. And he's saying, فَمَنْ أَتَاكَ فَقِيرًا لَسْتَ تَحْرِمُهُ He's saying to, to Prophet ﷺ, whoever comes to you impoverished, not claiming anything, empty. No, I know, I am, I, nothing. Coming to you, declaring his bankruptcy to you, you will never uh, forsake him. You will never leave him to go empty-handed. وَمَنْ أَتَى غَيْرَكُمْ وَاللَّهِ قَدْ حُرِيمُ And whoever comes to uh, other than you, in this dunya, whoever turns to uh, to any other door than Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to reach Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's pleasure and mercy will never be accepted. They have been they have been forsaken, 
يعني they will never reach anything ومن أتى بابكم فالسعد يخدم whoever comes to your door he has reached happiness وإن نظرت لمكروب غدا فرح he says to Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم only if you gaze about somebody who is in difficulty and affliction he will become happy وفرج الله كربا كاد يسقمه and Allah will, will take away any difficulty from someone who you gaze upon وما لها غير خلق خير الخلق إن عظمت he says whenever you are facing a difficult tribulation and difficulty there is no one no better remedy than to turn to Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم by salawat on him by asking him to intercede for you by asking him to ask forgiveness for you on your behalf وَمَنْ أَتَى فِي الْحِمَى فَاللَّهُ يُكْرِمُ And whoever takes protection with Prophet وسلم, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will honor that person. Now, this Sayyidina Awais al-Qarani, was such that Sayyidina, a person, that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa asked two of his grand wazirs, Sayyidina Umar and Sayyidina Ali, رضي الله عنهم عنهما that if you see this one if you ever meet Sayyidina Uwais ask him for dua <laughs> Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم asking two of his grand companions Sayyidina Umar and Sayyidina Ali خلفاء الراشدين المهديين guided inspired he said if you meet that one Ask him for dua and look at his aqidah. That's his belief. This is where we are now. We're looking around us uh, and seeing the whole world falling apart and the Muslim ummah in destitute, in difficulty, and, and we're turning left and right, here and there. And we don't sit and make today is Friday night. You have a difficulty, sit and make salawat. Make salah al Nabi and say, Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasulullah, you are my intercessor to, to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. I'm seeking your forgive you your I'm seeking forgiveness for of Allah in, in your presence, and I'm seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You make forgiveness for me. You intercede for me to lift this affliction, this difficulty from me. You ask Allah to, to take it away. Who are we? Mawlana Sheikh Nazim used to say, I'm shy. We ask, even he's shy to ask Prophet because of how much ta'zim, how much honoring he was seeing Prophet's maqam. Who am I? That's humility. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granting us life and granting us understanding and granting us Tawfiq, success, to come and sit and say La ilaha illallah or say Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. And I want to uh, say something about uh, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad uh, about Khatma Khawajagan, Naqshbandi Khatma Khawajagan, Dikr, Mawlana Sheikh Muhammad. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise his maqam endlessly. Shaykh al Tariqati Naqshbandiya Til Aliya. The Aliyah branch from Mawlana Sheikh Nazim, he is the successor and the carrier of the secret of Mawlana, Mawlana Sheikh Muhammad, mashallah. And he brought out a couple of days ago uh, the matter of Khadm al Khawajagan that uh, Mawlana Sheikh Nazim, the Khatim, the, the Khatim al Khawajagan, as, as passed on through the ages. The khatam, the dhikr that we do, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, is supposed to be silent in Naqshbandiya tariqa. They used to do it on stones, so they will have 100 stones, 108 stones. Uh, uh, eight large ones and, and 100 smaller ones. And they would sit, when we have 100, inshallah, people in a gathering will do the khatam on the stones. <laughs> but until then, <laughs> We'll wait, inshallah. We'll see. Uh, but he, they used to sit and do the khatim with the stones, silently. So the sheikh will have the stones and he will distribute, for example, 79 stones. 
79 times because there are 79 as according to Hadith Prophet Shu'ab of Iman uh, branches of Iman and for every branch they were reciting one Adam Nashrah Laka Sadra so they, they used to have that and whoever has the stone doesn't matter if there's a thousand people whoever has the stone recites the rest with presence and with direction to uh, to the Shaykh they would sit and uh, only the reciters, the ones with the stones, would recite. And this is known because Naqshbandiya Tariqa is Tariqa of, uh, yani there's no Jahri Dhikr. There's no. So, Mawlana Sheikh Nazim, uh, in the 70s, he started to go to Europe, and, uh, and people didn't know anything. People didn't know Fatiha, they didn't know. You know, a lot of converts were coming and even Muslims living in the West didn't know anything and so he started to do the shorter khatim without the stones seven times Fatiha and so forth loudly and I'm sure at that time as well when he started to do loudly I'm sure there was a lot of people objecting that oh he's doing something different and new why is he doing loud dhikr? And now Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us under his dhil, inshaAllah. He is saying there is no khatm al-khawajagan loudly anymore. He wants us to do the short khatm, but silently. So the first portion up to ihda, up to before la ilaha illallah, that we do, uh, loud dhikr, to do it silently. For example, he sits and he says seven Fatiha and everyone recites seven Fatiha and gets lost in the fifth. Uh, I'm joking, but <laughs> that's my condition. May Allah forgive us. But the idea is that uh, he will tell you and then you, you do silently without jar. And Alhamdulillah, Tariqa is Mara'ahu Shaykh. Tariqa is what the Shaykh sees fit, not what I see fit, or the Murids, or the Alims, or, no. As long as he is not asking you to do anything contrary to the Sharia, in terms of the Wazifa, or whatever it is, your obligation is to say Sami'na wa Ata'na, we hear and obey. If you don't want to be Sami'na wa Ata'na, then you know, you're, you, the world is large, Mawlana used to say that, Sheikh Nazim say, the world is big. Go to wherever you're happy, to the, the, whoever fits your uh, opinion or whatever it is, then the world is big. Do as you like. But this tariqa, as I believe, and many of uh, people, East and West and whatever, believe, our Shaykh is Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad. He is Shaykh Al-Tariqa. He is the inheritor of Mawlana Shaykh Nazim. Qaddas Allah Sirul Al-Aziz. And he is the one now, the living one, connected to all the Mashaykh up to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it is his prerogative to do as he likes. If he wants us to do loud zikr, we'll do loud zikr. If he wants us to do uh, hidden zikr, we'll do hidden zikr. Whatever he likes, it's his, it's his, uh, he is the sheikh and we are the followers. And Imam Sharawi, they asked him one time, you know, about this whole tariqa thing and how, how do you make, he said, use your mind. He said that you, you have to imagine going to a sheikh and accepting him as your sheikh and what, as somebody who is riding, uh, looking for uh, a palace. You use your horse to ride, but when you get to the palace and you, you've accepted that that king is your king, then you don't take your horse inside. Your aql, your mind, is that horse. So, you have uh, accepted Mawlana as your shaykh, using your mind, using whatever. Once you've accepted him as your shaykh, and you asked him for bay'ah, and you accepted him, then it is your duty to obey. That is our duty. 
If you didn't accept, then you don't take bay'ah. But you can't accept him as your sheikh and to object on any advice or decree that he has as long as it is according to Allah's uh, book and, he, and the sunnah of Prophet وسلم, as long as uh, your sheikh is not asking you to do anything contrary to the sharia, your obligation is to obey. No one forced you to take bay'ah and accept. And no one forcing you to even accept. So even after, if you object, you just basically uh, negated your bay'ah. It's not like there's a... You just basically asked, uh, left tariqah willingly uh, of the shaykh. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard, safeguard us from such fate. Alhamdulillah, we are happy with Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad. And we are happy with whatever he is uh, advising us and telling us. And we are happy to obey, inshallah. We'll, and uh, subhanAllah, last week I did the khatim. I normally do it loudly. <laughs> last week I did the khatim uh, uh, silently. And I think I was doing it a bit too fast. So we had some people online said, Shaykh, how, how, what are you reciting? Uh, seven Fatihas or half a Fatiha? I'm still in my. So may Allah forgive. I'll try to be more uh, uh, conscious, inshallah, this week. With, uh, with not doing it too fast. Allah, 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 may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and grant us understanding, Ya Rabbi, Tawbah, Astaghfirullah, Tawbah, Astaghfirullah. We are weak ones. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us with good ones and keep us from th thinking ill of anyone, any Muslim, so dhan To think ill of any Muslim, may Allah safeguard us from that. Husnul dhan bil muslimin kafa, inshaAllah. We have to. To think well of everyone and not to think ill of anyone. And that is in Muslims in general, but may Allah safeguard us from thinking ill of His true men, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah's uh, ibad, uh, awliya. May Allah forgive us, inshaAllah. ومن الله التوفيق بحرمة الحبيب بحرمة الفاتحة